Hello everybody and welcome back to the shop. A few years ago my wife had made quilts out of the t-shirts I had accumulated throughout my Highland Games career for all the kids. And this particular shirt here is from Grandfather Mountain which featured me on the back throwing a 28 pound weight. I asked the kids if any of them would like quilt wrecks and a couple of did. So this one's for Nikki. About 10 years ago a large oak tree was struck by lightning in the back of the property and came down. I had a saw come in, sawed it up, and got as many pieces out of it as we could. It stood outside for about a year, covered up, stickered, and then in the barn for a year and stickered, and then it's been in the basement ever since. So it's pretty stable. I planed everything to a common thickness and then stickered it for a couple of days in the basement so it could stabilize. I don't think this is going to shrink any more than kiln dried lumber wood and being from the own property it has special meaning. Next task was to size it and so I ripped the pieces that I needed and again woodworking is a dangerous sport so please work carefully. The X's and the arrows here are for me to indicate which side needed to be sanded and which side had been jointed. Took it back outside, sanded it a little bit more. I have a full size pattern on my bench on the inside and I made a full size template to make sure that both sides matched when the whole thing was put together. After I sanded it I brought it back in and cut everything to size and length and then I used uh, a beading tool, my, my beadlock system, to make loose mortises so that I could join the ends together. It's a very strong joint. I've used it in several projects. I really like it. You can see the tape there on the drill bit that lets me know when to stop, how deep to go. I did a little dry fit to make sure it was going to fit, and then I glued it up. Once it was glued up, I cut things close to the line and then I used a patterning bit on this full size template made of uh, MDF to cut the inside and the outside out and then I used my plunge router to cut mortises for all the tendons. In this way they match. The, mortise, the template has uh, holes that go all the way through so I can make sure I had a right side and a left side. Believe me that's important. Don't ask me how I know. And there's the finished end and I have to do it again so I just flip the template over and do it like that on the other one. Took it back to my table saw, used my tenoning jig to make the tendons, took it outside and rounded everything over. And again be very careful using any hand tools. I brought it back in and was ready for a dry fit so I made sure each tendon fit and then I taped numbers on them so I knew exactly what was going to go. After the dry fit, I glued everything up using Type Bond 3 glue because Type Bond 3 gives you a little bit more open time, and this was a big setup. Here it is for the real glue setup. I apologize for this uh, blurry picture, but it's the only one I have. I used the template then uh, just to put on the end so it wouldn't mar the wood, and I used some scraps on the other side there. And this is the finished quilt rack. That's the end of it and it's sitting in my daughter's living room. Once again, thanks for watching. Hope you enjoyed it. And until next time, be care and be careful. Take care and be careful.